today on Dr. Phil. Gender's beyond obsessed with me. One of my friends said it's like it's single white female. She's trying to be you. A friendship. She started referring to your children as my babies. That crossed boundaries. I miss my friend Tracy. I need her back in my life very badly. You start getting text messages that say, I can't get you out of my mind. I don't want this life without you. I'm not going to stop until I get that connection back. So your creep meter... Oh, it's way past creepy. Is it infatuation? Tracy is my past, my present, and my future. Did you try to sabotage her marriage? Or obsession? Did you text, I need you, I deserve you, I swear I will love you the right way? Let's do it. Why don't we stop all the drama, stop all the fighting, and let's go get you better. Here we go. Have a good show, everybody. If I can help get this family back on track, are you willing to do that? Pretty free. Take it. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Go, Dr. Phil. you to imagine living every day in absolute fear and constantly looking over your shoulder because no matter how many times you adamantly made it known you are not interested in a relationship the person just does not back off and in fact pursues you even harder they drive by your house they watch your every move they send you numerous text messages daily like these Every day, no matter what I think of you, I will love you like no other. I need you, baby. I deserve you. I don't want this life without you. Sounds like a former lover who can't handle the thought of breaking up. But actually, the person behind these texts is a former female friend of my first guest, Tracy. Take a look. Jenda's beyond obsessed with me. Jinda is sick and needs help. When we first met, Jinda would text me 50 plus times a day. She would text me, good morning, my love. I love you. She would text me and say, I'm right down the street. I need some Tracy love. I got a little creeped out. It didn't seem normal to me. She would show affection to my kids and she would call them her babies, her family, her loves, just like I would. Jinda would try to hang out with friends of mine. One of my best friends said to me, it's like it's single white female. She's trying to be you. I told her she was inserting herself too far into my life and that she needed to stop. She got very angry. She would go from, I love you, I need you back in my life, to you in a matter of moments. The most recent text I got, Tracy, I can't get you off of my mind. Please love me again. I need you, Tracy. I can't just give up on us. We were so special. I've never wanted anything more than this. Jinda lied and told her husband that I was well on my way to an affair. And then her husband sent a text to my husband. There was definitely a jealousy seed planted. Divorce was mentioned. She's definitely out to hurt my family. She's trying to destroy it. Okay. Now, everybody has friends, and sometimes it can go, I don't know, maybe a friend kind of encroaches or gets too involved. But that's not what we're talking about here, right? You say this has gone way too far. Way too far. You're scared even talking about this right now, aren't you? Um, <laughs> tell me what you're thinking right now. I'm afraid of what's going to happen after. Do me a favor. I, I want you to take a deep breath and understand that we're here to work the problem. Mm -hmm. This has gone on for a long time, right? And this just hasn't stopped. It hasn't stopped. So l let's talk about what we're dealing with here. The first time you met her was what? I was looking for a cake for my daughter's fourth birthday. So you were, you were buying a cake mm -hmm. for a birthday party? Yes. And she did what? She wanted to borrow some money? Yeah, after she delivered the cake, uh, she had, you know, emailed me again and asked me how everything was. Um, I told her it was great, it was wonderful, thank you so much. You know, I'll definitely use you again for, you know, other birthdays. I have four kids. You'll, right. you know. And she... Um, then proceeded to ask me to invest my money into her company. And she wanted what, $20,000? Like $20,000, yeah. Okay, was that a red flag? Yes. Okay, and your gut instinct said something to you? Yes. Okay, and listen, the reason I've said that, I and you may I, I, I've written a book right now called Life Code, mm. and Life Code talks about the fact 
that we need to start listening to our gut instinct. Agree. I did this with my son Jay, and we talked about it because we, we were born into very different worlds. The world's right. changing right now. Right. And we don't listen enough to our gut instincts, and I'll talk about that later. But you've, you, your gut instinct right then said something was wrong. You didn't see her for a while, right. and then you run into her. Uh, yes. She I'm, starts texting you. Mm -hmm. How often? Like 50 plus times a day. 50 times a day. Did that seem odd to you, it though, did. that you're getting those? Yeah, yeah. I, I made a list uh, of the things that, that she was sending to you. You start getting text messages that say, I can't get you out of my mind. I swear I will love you the right way. I, I will love you like no other. I need you. I deserve you. I miss your face. I don't want anything but your love. I deserve it. I can't stand this, Tracy. I need you. I don't want this life without you. Mm -hmm. I need you, baby. I can't bear to let you go. When you see them all together, how does that, what's your gut tell you now? I don't know what to do anymore. And she started referring to your children as my babies. So your creep meter. Oh, it's way past creepy. So you're pegging yeah. over here at this point. That's inappropriate. Very. It, it's gone. My husband doesn't even talk to me like that. Okay. All right. Okay, that's another show. Okay. You're saying, I, I need to distance this. This is inappropriate. Yes. When the bad stuff started happening is when I really let her have it. Okay, what bad stuff are you talking about? When she sa said things to my husband. What did she tell your husband? Well, she told, she her, told husband, her husband. To and tell then her husband told your husband what? That I was well on my way to an affair with a good friend of mine and that I was talking to somebody online. This did, in fact, create problems in your marriage. Huge. And see, th this is what I want everybody to know. There are p this is a pretty flagrant example of it, mm -hmm. but there are people like this in our lives. I call them baiters, and I talk about this in Life Code. There are people in our lives that are backstabbers, abusers, imposters, takers, exploiters. They're reckless mm -hmm. with your, your life and, and ours. Tracy fears that her obsession with her has turned into a romantic infatuation on Jenda's part, not, not Tracy's part. Let me be very clear about that. Thank you. Uh, very clear about that. Take a look at this. You'll understand. It would not surprise me if Jenda wanted to be more than friends with me. Her infatuation with me is extremely scary. She has sent me texts saying, let me show you how beautiful you are. And I would say to her, no, Jenda, I'm not like that. She would grope me and touch me, kiss on me, grabbing my breasts grabbing my butt, slapping my butt, kissing on my face. I was weirded out about her doing it. She would buy me drinks. She would say, you'll loosen up some if you drink some more. She texted me recently saying that she needed me to love her again. Please let me love you. The problem is I don't feel for her the way she feels for me. I would like Tracy to listen to Jenda describe how much their friendship means to her. Now, by the way, she hasn't been listening to any of this so far. She's backstage. She hasn't been hearing anything we've been saying. Uh, but I want you all to meet her by video. So here's a, a, a look at Jenda, the friend. I miss my friend Tracy, and I need her back in my life very badly. Tracy has a killer smile. It'll melt your heart. It'll make your bad days go away. I miss that smile. I need that smile. I'm willing to do what I can to get that smile back every day. I never met a woman that I had a connection with until Tracy came along. Tracy and I would talk from morning until night. I was her pea. She was my carrot. That made me feel a part of something very, very special. I am pushing really hard to get Tracy back into my life. I sent Tracy a message saying that we need a couples therapy. I will tell her how beautiful she is. I tell Tracy I miss her coffee. Coffee does not taste the same anymore. Tracy is my past, she's my present, and she's my future. No one could ever take that away from me. I'm not going to stop until I get that connection back. If I could see Tracy in person, I would probably fight everything inside me not to just go up to her and hug her. and not stop. I love her. Let, let me tell you what's going to happen now. Nobody ever sees this, but this is a script for this show, mm -hmm. Dr. Phil, season 11 show and, and the script. And 
I'll show you. When I say script, it's really kind of a flow chart because I don't have a script. I don't know what I'm going to say because I don't know what you're going to say. Hi. You can see here on this page it says uh, Jenda walks out. Um, but I watched the video this morning. I've been studying this for some time. Um, you know, we've asked you a million questions. Um, but I saw the video very early this morning. Um, and I made a, a clinical decision at that point. Uh, it might make really good television, but in my view, it is not in your best interest to be with this woman. Thank you. Now, I want to talk to her. Uh, I want to try to, you know, get through to her. It's obvious to me that there's an obsession here that's not healthy. She's not going to be happy when she finds out she's not going to see you. She's probably going to throw a fit. And you are being stalked. You have a stalker here. I don't think it's fair to just cut someone out of your life. She said she loved me. I just felt a bond with her that I hadn't felt with anybody else. Tracy introduced me to my husband. My husband thought it would be a good idea to divert some of her attention. She and Adam clicked and they ended up getting married. We were asked to be part of the wedding and even though neither of us really wanted to, we both said yes. Tracy was so excited to be part of our wedding. She was my cheerleader. The wedding was fabulous. We went to the wedding and we didn't stay long. We wanted to hurry up and get out of there. Knowing what I know now, I definitely would not have been in the wedding. Well, that was Tracy, who says accepting the invitation to be a bridesmaid in her former friend Jenda's wedding was really not something that, if she knew then what she knew now, she would have done, because this has gone in a bad direction in her opinion. Jenda is joining us now. Now, Jenda, I've been talking to Tracy without you here. I'm talking to you now without her here. Okay. Um, what's the state of this relationship, in your opinion, at this point? There's no relationship. Right, and, but you don't accept that. I don't want to. I don't want to accept that it's over. Tell me why. Tell me what you think about that. I met Tracy. We clicked. We didn't meet as friends, but we clicked as friends. Um, she held my hand through some horrible times in my life. She was the catalyst, her and her husband, to introduce me to them, to my husband. I, I am not perfect. I was not a perfect friend. I said some things that I should not have said. But when I love people in my life, I love them unconditionally. I don't think a person should be judged for the things that they say when they're hurt or they're angry. And I don't think it's fair to just cut someone out of your life that you said, she said she loved me. Um, do you think that you, um do you think you have violated boundaries in your relationship with her? I don't think so. Have you texted her up to 50 times a day? If it was back and forth, yes, I'm sure. I didn't constantly text her back or text her with no replies. Yeah. Did you send her a text that said, I can't get you out of my mind? I swear I will love you the right way. I will love you like no other. I need you. I deserve you. I miss your face. I don't want anything but your love. I deserve it. I can't stand this, Tracy. I need you. I don't want this life without you. I need you, baby. I can't bear to let you go. Sit. That sounds horrible. First off, did you write those texts? Yes. 
I just want to text you and hear that beep every day, no matter what I think of you. I wanted to be your soft place to fall. I want to beg you to stay. There is not a moment I don't want to message you. Does that seem as it's violated a boundary? I'm thinking it does now. I, I, I didn't, no. I didn't because we had <clears throat> such a close bond. We just had a close bond. And it, it may sound strange to other people, but it... But it doesn't sound strange to you. It didn't sound strange. No, it doesn't because... Have you said I love Tracy more than family? As much as family, yes. She no, was family. you said family more than family. More than some of my family, mm -hmm. yes. Have you said Tracy is my past, present, and future? She was there for me in my past when I was, I didn't think I had anybody, and she was there for me. Every second. We, I just felt a bond with her that I hadn't felt with anybody else. Mm -hmm. And the present <clears throat> is, everything that happens, you just, I found, I found a light I just, I loved her as, as I, I don't know what to say. Do you think you're obsessed with her? No, I don't. Do you drive by her house? Be honest. I, I have, mean, yeah. I have. Do you think that's odd? I mean, I don't do it. Sounds odd, yes. You were confidant. Yes. You were romantically motivated. Probably. I was... I had an attraction to her, yes. I'm sorry? I had an attraction to her, yes. Because she, she said that you had touched her before and that you had groped her some when you guys were out and you'd be drinking and that sort of thing. I mean, just be honest. It is what it is. Yes. So, you know, you start to deny that, and then you decide to say yes. I'm just asking, which is it? Is that true or not? Yeah. Uh -huh. Did you propose a three-way with her husband? No, I did not propose that. Yeah, how did that come up? <sighs> this is just... I'm sorry? This is... I feel like a villain. <laughs> Listen, if you don't want to talk about it, it's okay. We can end this right now. It's okay. I, I thought you wanted to talk about this. I do. Doubt it. But if you don't, I it's do. absolutely okay. Don't. But no, you're, you're playing the victim here. And if you, you're saying, oh, this, I just feel like the villain. I don't want to talk about this. If you don't, it's okay. I wanted to come on the show. I just, I miss her. And I wanted someone that didn't know either one of us to tell me the truth, to tell me what to do. I honestly love too much, maybe. I'm clingy, I'm needy. And if I need to let go, I will. I want to make her happy. I want to make me happy again. Well. I'm the answer man Yes. for I all know, that. I know that. I'm going to take a break, and when we come back, I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. You may like some of it. You may not like some of it. And I will be completely clear as to what I think you need to do. We'll be right back. Looking back, Jinda was never a friend to me. It was very one-sided. My daughter was in the midst of being diagnosed with epilepsy. And when I was talking to Jinda about this, she started telling me about her other friend, that her kid was in the hospital with something way worse. Like, what I was dealing with was nothing. It didn't matter. It was always about her. Well, that was Tracy, who says her former friend, Jinda, who's sitting here with me now, was more obsessed with being her friend than actually being one. And now Tracy wants Jenda to accept that their friendship is over. Jenda says she doesn't want it to be over. Did you try to sabotage her marriage? Did you tell your husband that she was having an inappropriate relationship with someone else 
and he called her husband and told him that, and it put her relationship in jeopardy? That doesn't sound like anybody's peas to somebody else's carrots. Because as a guy that's objective, mm -hmm. you know, not knowing either one of you, uh -huh. if I'm just sitting up in the arena watching this play out down there, I read those text messages and I see the intensity of your, what I think is obsession with her. I see you say she has a smile that's amazing. I miss that smile. I make a vow to her just like I did to my husband. I, I miss her face. Coffee doesn't even taste the same without her. I, I mean, I read these things. It sounds like a broken-hearted lover. And then I find out that you've said things to your husband that calls her husband that puts her marriage in jeopardy. I look at that and say, well, hell, she's trying to... Swear I won't forget this, why do I regret this? In my mind reckless, thoughts are feeling endless Sitting up I'm breathless, anxiety's infectious I feel so defenseless, betrayed and embarrassed I hate being open, I hate being broken I feel like an ocean filled up with emotion Anger ain't a potion, rub it on like lotion I can feel it soaking, reopen, the scars have awoken I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go I can't move on till I let go I feel so lost, never at home Need to be strong, every breath hold Cause I can't move on till I let go blow up her marriage so she's then forlorn and turns back to you looking for comfort. If you're not in the drama, doesn't it look to you like you look at that and go, well, I can see that coming. Looks, yes. Looks obvious, right? Yes. You say, I, you don't see it, right? But anybody else would see that in that way. 
So you say that you're a needy and clingy person. Now, this isn't the only relationship that you've been needy and clingy in, correct? No. Because, I, I mean, I was reading what you said, and you said you've been that way with other people in your life. You, you've been that way here, you've been that way here, um, you've been that way here, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And I'm not listing their names because there's no sense dragging them into this, but that's one, two, three other people. And now she would be a fourth that we know of. So this is kind of a pattern with you, right? Yes. So maybe it isn't her that is the reason you breathe. <laughs> maybe so, it's so silly. you. Right? Right. This was the most encouraging thing I've heard you say. And you repeated it here today. You said, quote, I am... I'm a needy, clingy person. I need to know that my friends love me. I need a lot of attention. I need constant text and communications. That's a quote from you. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that's encouraging to me? Because I acknowledge it. Yeah, I mean, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And because you see that, that gives me some measure of encouragement. Because there is something wrong here. Okay. This isn't healthy. Okay. Now, do you want to know why Tracy's not out here? Yeah, I mean, I... Because in my professional opinion, it isn't healthy for her to be out here. Okay. I do think you're obsessed with her, but I don't think this is about her at all. Okay. I think she's just in the person that's currently in your crosshairs. You just need to be in love. You need to be loved. You, you need to be infatuated. You need to be intensely in that drama. And, you know, I, I haven't evaluated you. I haven't done diagnostics on you. But, you know, there's, a, there's something called personality disorders. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Every, you know, some people have arthritis. Some people have personality disorders. And there are different clusters in personality disorders. And if you were to see somebody professionally, they would go through that. There, there are three clusters of personality disorders. There's clusters A, B, and C. Okay. And uh, cluster A is odd and eccentric behaviors. That's not you. B is dramatic, emotional, or erratic disorders. Um, you would fall into there if, if I would... I would suspect if I was just looking at you. And C, anxious or fearful disorders, and you would fall in there. Now, under B, there are a couple that I would look at if I were looking at you. Um, histrionic disorders, uh, attention-seeking behavior that includes sexual seductiveness and emotions inappropriate in typical society. They don't recognize boundaries. And narcissistic disorder, pervasive patterns of grandiosity, need for attention, and lack of empathy for others, meaning you don't pay attention to the fact that this is bothering somebody else. And then in cluster C, anxious or fearful disorders, uh, dependent disorder. Um, that's pervasive psychological dependence on other individuals. I'd be looking at those three things, and those all sound kind of like what you described down here. Now, again, I'm not diagnosing you because I can't do that without sitting down and doing a prolonged clinical interview and an appropriate set of psychometrics and, and all and to, to do the proper diagnosis. But if you saw someone professionally, I, I, would, I would say to them, I think you should pay attention to whether I fall into one of these categories and see if you can give me some help with this because I don't want to be this way. I don't and you can handle this. You can get better. And that way it's better for you, it's better for your kids, it's better for your life, it's better for your friends, it's better for your family. And in addition to telling you, I will also offer to provide you the help to deal with this. And I will get you appropriate professional help, just as our gift to you, if you will accept that. Would you do that? Yes. I'm going to excuse you. I'm going to bring Tracy back out after you're gone and talk with her for a bit. Okay.
It's really important that you not contact Tracy until you talk to that professional. I won't. Okay. I'm going to hope that you'll take the gift I'm offering Absolutely. you. You're not a bad person. You just need to make an adjustment in this area, and then I hope you'll be happy in your life. Okay? All right. Thank you. We'll be right back. Well, I just finished talking with Jenda, who, as you all know, in my opinion, is obsessed with Tracy. I was very honest with her. I told her exactly what I thought was going on. And I'm encouraged that she does show some degree of insight. And I asked her to make a commitment to me not to contact Tracy, and she agreed that she wouldn't do that. And our resource director is already making arrangements for her to have professional help and support back in her hometown because we want that to happen right away so there is support and intervention uh, before much time passes. So you've been watching uh, from backstage. Tell me what your reaction is to that conversation. I'm hoping she's genuine, mm -hmm. that she genuinely got it like it seemed she did. Mm -hmm. I don't think she put it two and two together with until she saw it. I think she saw it very differently until it was laid out. <laughs> well, I think you're right. And I think sometimes when two things help people sometimes, when they see themselves on video, mm -hmm. it's like they're watching somebody else that gives them some objectivity sure. from it. And then when they do see statements that occur across time concentrated in writing in one place, mm -hmm. they go taken as a group. Yeah. That's pretty incriminating, and I thought that had a, I thought that had an impact uh, on her, uh, where she went, wow. And I think she started to deny a few things that she admitted, which I thought was good. Mm -hmm. And um, she did describe herself as needy and clingy and needing on attention. On her Facebook page. <laughs> right. Like and, and I showed her a list of people in her life. Mm -hmm. that she said she's done the same thing with, that she's done with yeah. you. So she acknowledged the pattern. Those are all good signs because sometimes people just like, nope, nope, nope. They, don't, they refuse Denial. to show, have any insight whatsoever. Now, I'm not saying that this is a no-risk or low-risk situation. And I think you have to respect it um, as a risky situation at this point. And if you get so much as a trimmer from that direction, then my recommendation to you is that you file for a restraining order. You have the evidence to get that. It's up to you to decide whether you need to do that at this point or not, but certainly if you do get contacted after today, then I would recommend that you do that, and, you, and in my opinion, you certainly have a body of evidence to support getting that done. I, I think you will get what you came here for, which is a game changer in, in getting her to mm -hmm. withdraw from this relationship. Yes. What do you think? I think I'm very thankful. <laughs> I'm glad, glad I came. came. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad you did, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. Our next guest said she was betrayed and backstabbed in the most hateful way by her own sister, resulting in a three-year silence. We're going to meet them both when we come back. I haven't spoken to my sister Holly in three years because I cheated on my husband. She has decided to take his side. She does owe me an apology. The words, I'm sorry, will not be coming out of my mouth. My next guest, Carrie, says her sister Holly has absolutely no remorse for purposely stabbing her in the back, resulting in a three-year silence among sisters. I haven't spoken to my sister Holly in three years because I cheated on my husband. She has decided to take his side. I was wrong for cheating, but I feel it was none of my sister's business. After I left my husband, I went on vacation with my current boyfriend and received a phone call from my sister calling me the biggest whore on the face of the earth. I ended up turning my phone off, and when I turned my phone on the next morning, there was 17 voicemails verbally bashing me over and over again. 
When I left my husband, Holly purposely befriended him to get back at me. She took my husband's side during my custody and divorce trial. My sister wrote an affidavit to the court stating that she did not feel I was a good mother and that my ex-husband would be better off with my kids. My sister also offered to help out my current boyfriend's now ex-wife during his court proceedings to show up and testify on what a terrible person that I was. I was absolutely livid. She does owe me an apology. Well, Holly could not see this more differently. She insists she has done nothing wrong, and the words, I'm sorry, will never come out of her mouth. My older sister, Carrie, is a lying, manipulative person. I'm content not talking to my sister. The affair that she had was the straw that broke the camel's back. Being caught in a handicapped restroom stall with her husband 20 feet away. What she did was wrong. I did side with her husband. After she was caught cheating, she left and did not see her kids for about three months. She's master manipulator, and she can convince anybody she's the victim. I'm not sure why she called Dr. Phil. Her list of embarrassing actions is a mile long, and if she wants me to come on national TV and reveal that laundry list, then I'm more than willing to do that. The words, I'm sorry, will not be coming out of my mouth. Okay, why did you want to be here, Carrie? To get a resolution, to at least to make it feasible to have family gatherings and to, for everybody to get along. It's been three years. So you want a relationship with your sister? Absolutely. Um, and you feel like the betrayal is that she sided with your husband rather than you and your blood? Yes. Um, although you don't expect her to endorse what you did. I don't endorse what I did. Thank I never you. have. I know what I did was wrong. <clears throat> But for my whole family to turn against me for leaving my marriage is just like a stab in the back. Okay. So what's up? Um, <laughs> I have, I, I don't have any reason or, or any idea why she would want to bring me here for the whole world to, <clears throat> you know, hear about the whole laundry list of things that she did. I did not... I understand how she might feel betrayed that I took her ex-husband's side, mm -hmm. but what she did, I mean, I've been cheated on, she knew that. I know the signs, I know, I know how it goes, I know how the game is played. Mm -hmm. So I told her if she wanted to leave her now ex-husband, do it the right way, get your affairs in order, and get things taken care of. Don't <clears> just leave them high and dry and especially you know your kids mm -hmm. but how did you become the moral police in her life i, I don't i didn't that. become i did not become the moral police well, no, in her you life. did you, you left her messages calling her a whore and a tramp how did you get in that role i, I called and left those messages because that was the weekend that she flew to vegas with her boyfriend and the weekend that my parents had to move out of there um, very nice high-rise apartment into a, a house that I know my mother didn't want to move back into. And that was your fault that they had Little moved. did you know they were moving <clears throat> back anyway. And that's something you don't know. Well, there's a lot of things that you don't know. Well, but that's the problem when people don't communicate is there are things each other don't know. <laughs> and I'm going to get up on my soapbox and <laughs> become a moral traffic cop. Uh, next, Holly says her sister's affair was just the tip of the iceberg. We'll be right back. Another boiling point for me was Carrie has borrowed, stolen, or conned upwards of $20,000 from my parents and myself and never paid a dime back. I'm very disappointed in my sister. Well, that was Holly, who says her sister Carrie's affair was just another example in a long history of being manipulative and deceitful. Is that true or not? She's never been held accountable for <clears throat> anything she's done. She's great at playing the victim. Yeah, I had to have help from my mom and dad. 
you know, on occasion to and things like done? that. I never borrowed money to get my hair done. You're a liar. I mean, Not my parents true. did help me, and my parents have helped her, too. She's usually only came around when she needed to borrow money. Um, I've not so, borrowed. I've not borrowed money from mom and, in about and, five years, and the last time I did it was twenty bucks. And really, if my parents did help me out, it's none of her business anyway. You're making it everybody's business. <laughs> What's your problem? <laughs> my problem is that you left him high and dry, and I left him, not yeah. my family. <sighs> when you all show up at court on my divorce hearings, and you're sitting next to him, and nobody even looks at me. When I go to court when you, for a domestic uh, violence and you're all sitting there yeah. making me out to look like the bad person, um, hello, I didn't because, get arrested. Because you know as well as I do, he didn't lay a hand on you. <laughs> mom okay, was upstairs. So the, the, yeah, I know mom was you didn't, upstairs and didn't, didn't even think, come down to help me. <laughs> because she didn't hear anything. Yeah, but the neighbors really ended think, up calling really the cops because they heard me because, screaming. And I know how you are. You play the victim. You probably busted out the door and was screaming and, help you, me, you, help me. You hear I know this? how you are. What, me? The, the police department has pictures. They wouldn't have arrested him if there weren't any marks or anything on me. That's how it Whenever works. the cops are called, somebody goes to jail. Yes, the person with marks on them go to jail. Um, I'm sure you were completely innocent. You know what? There's and no, you know what? Was... He told you not to come in the house. You're going to need more water. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty falls, good. I've got you talking asleep. more than you have in three years. Yeah, she falls <laughs> Domestic violence. Look, here's, here's the thing. Seriously, let, let me. I hate to interrupt because you are talking, <laughs> which is good. Um, but he, he, here's the thing. Um, you don't like everything that she does, and you don't like everything that she does. She's sitting over here being very righteous and judgmental, and you're sitting over there like holier than thou. It, it's hard to be pious given your history, but you're pulling it off. <clears throat> you two clearly are sisters. Um, all, all I'm saying is, look, I don't want to be your sister because she made some really bad and talk this through. You love your sister, do you not? Yes. And you love your sister, do you not? Absolutely. You don't like the way she's treated you, the names that she's called you. You don't like the choices she's made and the turmoil she's created for your family. But you love her. Resolve those things or not, but love each other. And you're not as right as you think you are. Okay. And you're not as victim as you think you are. Mm -hmm. But listen, don't lose each other in the process. All right. We come back. My final thoughts on dealing with a toxic person in your life. We'll be right back. Well, I want to thank all of my guests today. I, listen, um, it, it's important that we are aware that not everybody in our lives has our best interest at heart. And we have to learn to listen to our instincts. And I talk about that a lot in Life Code. This world has changed. And when the game changes, the rules change. And when the rules change, you need a new rule book. And that's why I've written Life Code. And right now, the only place you can get Life Code is at thebooknook.com. I've published this with my son, Jay. Uh, he's the publisher of this book. But right now, you can get it uh, at Jay's bookstore, thebooknook.com. And everybody in the audience today is going home with a copy of Life Code. Thanks for being here. So long.